In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an inexpensive yet highly effective hand throttle for your Toyota 4x4. If you're crafty and resourceful, you can probably do this project for less than 20 bucks in parts. Even though the example will be on an old Toyota 4x4, you can probably use the same techniques and apply it to other vehicles. So why would you want to put in a hand throttle? Well, the main benefit comes when you have three pedals under the dash and only two feet. If you've got yourself into a dicey situation where you need a lot of control and finesse, a hand throttle gives you the option to stand firmly on the brake with your right foot, blend the clutch with your left, and precisely work the throttle with your hand. When you're bound up in the rocks or balanced on the nose or tail of your rig, trying to do the heel-toe dance between your brake and gas pedal with one foot doesn't exactly lend itself to precision control. Years ago, I worked as a bike mechanic, so pretty much everything you'll see on this project comes from the bicycle world, or more specifically, the bicycle parts junk drawer in my shop. I'll put a parts list for this project, as well as Amazon links to examples of those parts in the video details section on YouTube. My hand throttle is based around a mechanical brake lever for a mountain bike. Left or right doesn't matter, you can get them singularly or in pairs pretty cheap on Amazon, but if you've got a local bike shop that's been around for a long time, I can almost guarantee they'll have a box of old used levers laying around somewhere in the back. You can probably score one for free if you buy some of the other parts you'll need from them. I've seen a lot of hand throttle setups that use an old friction thumb shifter. Those work just fine and have an added bonus of being able to set the idle and lock it in a specific place. But for me, I really like the smooth, infinite control of the brake lever, as I'm only ever using it for just a second when I'm trying to do a controlled takeoff and need to stay on the brake until the clutch takes over. Occasionally, when I do need to use the hand throttle to raise idle for, say, running an engine-driven compressor or testing something at a higher RPM, I can always adjust the tension of the cable with one of the barrel adjusters or simply jam a screwdriver under the lever. Next, you'll need a universal bike brake cable. To give yourself the most options for routing, I'd recommend you get a universal brake cable for a tandem bike. Tandem bikes are really long to accommodate two people, so the rear brake cable needs to be extra long also. The last one I bought was 2,795 millimeters, which is about 9 feet. I've seen them as long as 3,500 millimeters though, which is about 11 and a half feet. Now, you'll notice I said universal bike brake cable. It's important that the cable has the correct end on it to fit your brake lever. Mountain bike style brake levers use the fat cylinder shaped ends. Road bike levers will use the mushroom shaped ends. A universal cable will have one type of each at opposite ends of the cable. So don't cut the wrong end off or you'll be buying another cable. You'll need a length of brake cable housing around the same length as your cable. Brake cable housing is different from shifter cable housing. And the way you tell is by looking at the cut end of the housing. Brake cable housing has a spiral wound metal component, and that's because it needs to act against compression forces to give a better braking feel. Shifter cable housing has long linear wire strands to aid in smooth travel of the shifter cable to allow for better shifting. Along with the cable housing, get a couple of cable housing ferrules. They're the end caps for the cable housing after you cut it. And if you want to make sure the end of the cable itself doesn't fray, grab a cable tip or two just in case you drop one. Next up, a bicycle cable barrel adjuster of some sort. You can buy them online, but just as easily rob them from old used bike parts. Remember that local bike shop I was talking about earlier? They'll probably have a bin of used brake and shifter parts you can get a barrel adjuster off of. In the past, I've used barrel adjusters from brake levers, brake calipers, and my current setup uses one off an old rear derailleur. It's optional, but for attaching the cable to the throttle linkage, a straddle brake cable carrier makes the install and adjustment a bit cleaner and easier. You can just as easily use a small hose clamp, which you'll need anyway, but we'll talk about that a bit later. If you want to route the cable and housing under the cab, you should get some rubber grommets that'll fit snugly on the cable housing. If you still have carpet in your rig, you can just route the cable and housing under the carpet and avoid drilling holes in the floor. To finish off the parts list, depending on your application, it may be handy to have some simple electrical wire guides and sheet metal screws, a few inches of heater hose, and some electrical tape. So the tools you'll need for this job include a cable and housing cutter. By far the best tool for the job will be dedicated bicycle cable cutters. 
You need a type of cutter that cuts around the wire and housing, not across it, so you don't fray the cable or crush the housing. In a pinch, you can also use a high-speed cutoff on a Dremel. You'll also need Allen wrenches for the bolts on the brake lever, a drill and various bits, and finally a metric tap with the same thread pitch as the extra barrel adjuster. Since I finished this project years ago and I don't really want to pull it out of the truck and reinstall it for the video, I'll do a tour of the system and explain how each section works and is attached. Where I need more illustration, I'll film it out on the bench with other parts to make it easier to see. Hopefully that'll give you the info you need to design your own hand throttle system for your specific application. We'll start with the lever. I'm running a mountain bike brake lever on my transfer case shifter lever. My shift lever knob had almost the right diameter to clamp the brake lever to it. A few wraps of electrical tape to increase the diameter of the shift knob helped the brake lever clamp down tight. I would have liked to have run the lever clamped to the actual shift lever shaft, but due to the position of the shaft and the shape of the lever, it would have kinked the cable housing and interfered with the shifter boot if it was mounted any lower. You want the largest radius bends in the cable housing you can manage so the cable inside it can slide smoothly. Since my shifter knob had a slight taper to it, I also added a bit of heater hose to the shift lever shaft where it would butt up against the brake lever to keep it from migrating down the taper over time. If you want to attach the brake lever to your transmission shifter or somewhere else, just be aware that you'll probably need to build up the area to get the brake lever to clamp down tight. Once you figure out where you want to put your lever, you need to figure out where you're going to route your cable housing. On my truck, I elected to go through the floor, under the cab, and then come out on the passenger side of the tranny tunnel. From there, I went up and around the vents and then to the parking brake lever bracket. You don't have to go through the floor and under the cab, though. If you've got carpet or vinyl flooring still in your rig, you can just route it under that. Since I don't have either of those in my cab, I just went under so I wouldn't be dealing with the cable flopping around or getting snagged by a passenger. If you do decide to go through the floor, use some rubber grommets to pass the cable housing through the floor to keep it from getting cut up by the sheet metal or rattling around in the holes. It also helps to seal them. Once you figure out where you're going to route the cable housing, you can put that aside for a second and put in a small barrel adjuster where the cable housing is going to stop at the truck's parking brake lever. You could just drill a small hole in the lever and then run the cable housing right up to the bracket and pass the wire through the hole, but a more elegant and functional solution is to tap a hole and thread in a barrel adjuster. On mine, I ended up using an old barrel adjuster from a road bike's rear derailleur. You can also find barrel adjusters on road bike brake calipers, although those will be quite long. If possible, I'd avoid using the barrel adjusters found in the brake lever, as these will have a much larger diameter, coarser thread, and are split lengthwise. Tapping a hole in the truck's parking brake bracket can be a pain with the parking brake lever in place, but if you have a set of tap holders like this that let you run a socket extension in there, it's pretty easy. The sheet metal's thin, but you just need a thread or two to make this work. You can buy a barrel adjuster online, but again, it's the kind of thing that you can usually get cheap or free out of the junk box at the local bike shop. Once you have the barrel adjuster mounted, it's time to get the cable housing fitted to length. To start, take the barrel adjusters on the brake lever and the parking brake bracket and adjust them to the middle point in their available thread. This will give you the ability to make fine adjustments up or down to the cable tension once you're all wired in. Make a clean cut on one end of the housing and make sure the inner liner is open. You may need to take a pick and open up that inner liner if it got crimped during the cut. This is really important as the cable won't thread in there if the inner liner is pinched. Take one of your ferrules and slip it over the end of the housing. If you're using metal ferrules, you can crimp them on so they won't slip off. Insert the housing and ferrule into the brake lever barrel adjuster. Route the cable housing from the lever to the other barrel adjuster in the truck's parking brake bracket, remembering to make smooth curves with the housing as you go. Once you get the routing and length of the cable housing worked out, cut the housing to its working length. Make sure the second cut is also clean and that the inner liner is open. It's possible that you may end up using a small barrel adjuster that won't accept a brake housing with a ferrule on it. That's okay, just insert the housing directly into the barrel adjuster without the ferrule. The bottom line is, you want both ends of the cable housing fully seated in the barrel adjusters. If you feel the need, you can also put in wire guides to make sure the cable doesn't move around. 
If your hand throttle is attached to a shifter lever that's going to move, make sure you've got enough slack in the cable housing to allow it to travel throughout the range of movement. Now, take your universal brake cable and determine which end is going to fit in your hand throttle lever. Once you're sure you've identified the correct end, cut the other one off. In order to get the cable to slide through the housing's inner liner, you need to have a good clean cut on the cable. This is where having actual cable cutters comes in handy as they'll make a cleaner cut than straight draw wire cutters. Align the split in the barrel adjuster to the split in the lever, and then insert the cable end into the pocket in the lever. Turn the barrel adjuster a little so that the cable won't fall back out. Now thread the cable all the way through the housing and out the other end. Thread the cable through the second barrel adjuster and the parking brake lever. Make sure both ends of the housing are fully seated in their respective barrel adjusters. Now you just need to hook up the cable to the gas pedal linkage. You could do this as simply as running the cable to the pedal linkage and secure it with a small pipe clamp, but what I like to do is use a bicycle straddle cable carrier. By clamping the cable carrier to the pedal linkage, it gives you an easy and clean way to anchor and adjust the cable. However you decide to secure the cable to the linkage, be sure to pull the cable taut before you lock it down, but not so tight that it's already pulling on the linkage. Now that your cable's all hooked up, you can use the barrel adjusters to fine tune the tension in the cable. Screw the barrel adjuster in to decrease tension on the cable, or unscrew the barrel adjuster to increase tension. If you pulled the cable taut when you anchored it, you'll probably need to thread the barrel adjusters in to take some of the tension off the cable. You want to make sure that the cable isn't pulling on the throttle linkage at idle, but also that it's tight enough so you don't have a bunch of slack to take up at the lever. You also want to make sure that the bare cable running from the truck's parking brake bracket to the throttle linkage isn't going to get hung up on anything when it has slack and inadvertently hold the throttle open. If you do end up adjusting tension at the lever, make sure to tighten down the lock ring on that barrel adjuster when you're done. Once you have everything where you want it, you can trim off the excess cable and crimp on a cable tip to keep it from fraying. But don't cut it off too short though, just in case you need to make fine adjustments during testing. After you're done with your install, you should definitely go and practice to get familiar with it. You might need to make some more adjustments to cable tension or play with the mounting point on the linkage as that will increase or decrease your leverage on the linkage. Once you get it dialed in and get used to the action, I think you'll find it quite handy. So to try and best illustrate where the hand throttle is most helpful, I've gone and parked on a, on a reasonably steep gravel road and I've currently got the parking brake on and I'm going to show you where this hand throttle really likes to shine. So. I don't want to take my foot off the brake because we're pointed uphill and it's loose gravel so I'm going to go take the parking brake off. Now I'm still standing on the brake right here and I got the clutch in. I'm going to put it in first and I'm in two wheel drive high range and I'm just going to ease up on the throttle a little bit. You can hear I can, can, I can get quite a bit of throttle out of this thing if I want but I just need a little bit and then I'm going to start to let the clutch up until I feel the clutch start to grab and then I can ease off the brake and get on the gas pedal nice and smooth, no wheel spin and take straight off up the hill even in the loose stuff. Thanks for watching my video. I'll put links to examples of the products and tools I used on this project down in the video details section on YouTube. Check out the playlist of my other Toyota and 4x4 tech related videos Please take a moment to click the thumbs up vote, share the video on social media, and if you're so inclined, subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe, be sure to click that notification bell icon so YouTube will let you know when I post new content. All those things help me to keep making more of these videos. Thanks.